The first memories that I have of being alive, I remember feeling like I was floating in a fetal position, my arms crossed in darkness and space and time and clouds. I remember hearing my mother's voice yelling, Freddy, you gotta come in now, it's time to eat. Next thing I know, boom, back. It felt like somebody put the lights on. And I was three years old, standing on my corner of my house next to my big tree that's no longer there. My friend at the time, Chris. And uh, we had to come in because the street lights were coming on. I remember being like, what the hell just happened? Where was I? What's going on here? And from that moment on, I remember everything the rest of my life. I don't know if I blacked out everything before that or what, but I just it feels like there was nothing there until that moment. Um... I remember saying, all right, Chris, I got to go. I got. I went inside. This was late 70s, early 80s. I had to be about three years old. Back then, you could stand on your corner and uh, in a gated house and, 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 and play with your friends. Um, my name is Frederick Rocco Gattuso, Quadrant, New Jersey, USA, my entire life so far, 33 years. Um, my father's side of the family is the Gattuso's. My mother's side is the Holmes. The Gattuso's and Holmes come from Jersey City, New Jersey. Before that, the Gattuso's came from North Adams, Massachusetts. Before that, they came from Italy and Sicily. The Holmes before Jersey City, they came from St. John's, New Brunswick, Canada. Before that, they came from England. I'm a big European mix, but I'm American 100%, and I'll be American until the day I die, or until the day America dies, which I don't know which one's coming sooner anymore. Um, my father left us when I was three years old. My mother and my father got divorced. Um, my mother was left with six kids and a grandkid at home. She never worked a day in her life. She had to work three jobs to keep a roof over her head. She had to bust her ass and break her back. I never got to see my mother a lot when I was a kid because um, she was always working. So I was raised by my brothers and my sisters pretty much who were all older than me. My closest brother, my closest sibling is seven years. That was my brother. Um, the only times I really got to see my mother was on a Friday night. She'd take me to the movies. We'd go get a toy at Toys R Us or KB Toy Stores and go to the movies. And that was pretty much when I got to see my mother. We were poor, so we didn't have a lot of money. So I would use my mind and be creative a lot. I would take the popcorn box that I got from the movies, take it home, wash it out, cut a hole in it. That was a door, cut another hole, that was a window, and now G.I. Joe had a fort. Um, we didn't have money for a $60 Voltron, so I'd take a box of animal crackers, flip it inside out, color it with crayons or marker, put four Q-tips as the legs, bam, now all of a sudden I got the red Voltron. That's the way we had to do it. We had to use our minds. So being young, I was brought into music because we didn't have much. My sisters played the piano, and my brother played the drums. My father was a drummer, and my uncle was a drummer and studio musician, so we had drums at our house. So we used what we had. Um, the drums, my brother would play, and I would grab the mic and start singing. We used to record our little sessions. We had a band called Tusifa, and we recorded about 15 songs, and got them on the website. If anybody ever wants to peep them on the music page, away at the bottom. Um, growing up, I was watched a lot by my nieces, and my, my I had a niece also as well growing up, Oriana, who was a year younger than me. She was more like a sister to me than actually like a niece, and I love her like a sister to this day. And growing up, I, I was... Raised also by a few really close neighbors that I considered aunts, but they really weren't aunts. Um, Miss Verillo, Miss Robinson, Miss Martin, and Rosemary up the block. They were very influential in my life, and so was my third grandmother, Awella, um, my niece's grandmother, who was of Cuban descent, and I was raised with a very heavy Cuban influence as well. Um, as a kid, my brothers would wa- my brother would watch me. I mean, my cousins, who I called my cousins, but they really weren't. They were his friends. And uh, as a kid, I had this little plastic car. And um, I'm sure we all did as kids that it wasn't motorized, but it was you could drive it. And you put a little slot in the back for your sodas and your toys and stuff. And they would take me to the top of my hill on my block, which was a lot steeper back in the day. It's been repaid about 30 times over. And they would push me down the hill. As a kid, I loved it. I would scream, ah, I'd love it. Sometimes I'd crash out the car, and they'd come run down and see if I was right. But I'd be laughing, having a good time. And, uh... As a kid, I, I, a couple times I crashed into the cars on purpose, and um, to the parked cars, and everybody would laugh, and oh, it was funny, and so I got the name Freddie Fender Bender, and I kept doing it more and more because I, I realized people laughed, and they enjoyed it, so I liked having the control of actually being able to make people have emotion. It was pretty cool at that time to realize the power of people's emotions, so I got the name Freddie Fender Bender from that. Um, went to the nursery school, Peppermint Tree. 
as a kid in Seawar, New Jersey. And it was awesome. We had a little nap time or play time or our little classes, art time and stuff. And I actually got to meet a bunch of people I went to nursery school with later on in life. And that was kind of crazy to remember those memories. Um, the fondest memory I have of that day of being in Peppermint Tree was one day my oldest brother Nick and his wife Donna came to pick me up. And um, I remember asking, where's Mommy and Frankie? That's my mother and my brother. And they told me they were in a bad accident that a Hess oil trucker ran over them and crushed them in the car and I never remember being more scared in my life thinking something happened to my mother and my brother. Thank God they were okay and they lived. But ever since that day, seriously as a kid, maybe four years old, three and a half, four years old, I, I remember hating oil companies, honestly, for almost taking a life of my mother and my brother and that's that's not any jokes. Um Growing up in Carteret, New Jersey, it was really cool because we had a lot of different ethnicity in this town we had we had it wasn't just a big white town we had a lot of different culture and ethnicity in this town so it was really cool and I was really appreciative of that um when I was a kid kindergarten and, and my first grade I went to Washington school and um where I live I live in a house on a corner up the block from my house is apartments my best friend at that time Kareem was a black Muslim kid and I never looked at racism or, or, or his color or his race or anything or his religion and I still don't. It was just, that was my friend. You know what I mean? It was my best friend. And um, my sisters and his sisters were friends. They went to high school at the time. And they would watch us sometimes after school. And they would force us to watch General Hospital. And we hated it. We hated it. Could not stand it. So we would sit in the back of my house. Uh, I had a little fort house, tree house kind of deal that me and my brother and my cousins and them would use. And um, we'd go back there, me and Kareem, and, and we'd play our little boom box and uh, listen to tapes, and I'd always play like the Beatles, Elvis, Simon and Garfunkel, Jackson 5, Michael Jackson, it's pretty much all I could really listen to and have at the time, and um, maybe I'd sneak like an Ozzy tape for my brother, or a Black Sabbath tape, and uh, one day Kareem brings by his tape, he's like, let me play you something, man, he throws it in, we're sitting back there, man, I hate General Hospital, and uh, fuck Blake, you know, <laughs> couldn't stand it, <coughs> so um, he plays me his tape, in the first 10 seconds, I'm like, what the hell is this, man? I'm like, what is this? I'm like, there's no singing. I'm like, they're, they're not singing. There's no bass line. I'm like, this isn't musical. What is this? Then it started. I never heard nothing like that in my life. I said, what is this, man? What is this? And I instantly fell in love with it. And it blew my mind. And I knew from that moment on, I was like, something about this music is going to do, is, is going to change my life. It was the first Run DMC album, and needless to say, yeah, it did change my life. I, 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 it was my introduction to rap and hip hop. I wanted to know more about it. I wanted to hear more of this. I, I wanted to make something like this. I, I wanted to put it into the Tusifa band, and I kind of did back in the day. I was rapping at five years old, and it's on tape. And um, I loved it. It was beautiful. It was, it was great. And um. I don't know what else to really more say about that. Thank you, Kareem, a hundred million times over and over and over again. Um, growing up, I spent a lot of time with my with my, my niece, Oreo, Oriana. I said she was like my sister, so it was everything, everything we did, pretty much we always did it together. Like night and day, we used to play a game called Pigs in the Mud. We invented, we had no money, so we had to be creative. So we, we, had, we made a game called Pigs in the Mud. I used to have bunk beds and, um, We'd fight. The wall was the was the base, and you had to kick the other person off the bed. <laughs> and then and, and then they were a pig in the mud. You know, the, the, off the bed was the mud, and you had to kick the pig off the mud. It was kind of a, kind of a fucked up game, but um, we used to play pig in the mud a lot. Um, a lot of those times back then, not having money, being poor, using our mind, being creative, really sculpted me later on in life. It really made me who I was, looking back, thinking about it, being so diverse and multicultured, it really made me who I was, and um, I'm appreciative of my past, and everything that came with it, um, every Saturday we'd go see my grandmother in Bayonne, New Jersey, I used to love walking around Bayonne, she'd always treat me to a toy, and that was like my big highlight. It's like I got a toy on Friday night from, to see my mom, and Saturday morning I got a toy from my grandmother, so that was like the biggest 
thrill in the, as a kid in the world, and I loved it. And I missed those days so tremendously, walking up and down Avenue A and C, <laughs> B and C, and on Broadway on uh, in Bayonne. That's pretty much the first memories of life I could ever really remember. I remember everything after that. Ever since that light switched and my mother yelled, Freddie, it's time to come in and eat. The lights are coming on. That was the start.